Hello, I wanted to do a video to show the capabilities of being able to use the effect assist window to be able to draw on your models now with uh, the pictures effect. So when you select the picture effect, as long as you've got the effect assist turned on, which if it's not, you can go down under settings and make sure I use toggle mode. So if you click on the effect that supports it, it shows up. If it doesn't, then it disappears. So, like, if you click on that, you can, you've got like it supports the more. If it doesn't support the galaxy, but it does support pictures. So, it's got it's going to show you the picture that's loaded for that effect that you would see here in the effect settings window, and we automatically default to the pencil tool. Um, I created this first cut at a um, like a color picker. We might have some other options available later, but I just did this one for now. So I've got eight colors and there's a little there's a little radio button underneath that as you click the little color swatches it'll show you which one you have selected. Once you select a swatch you can go up here and change what color is assigned to that color swatch and you can see a little bit bigger version over here and this works kind of like Photoshop where whatever you have selected would be the it would like lock in that like this is saturation so that makes the slider just saturation and over here it affects hue and brightness or you can lock in brightness and then this does hue and saturation or you can be down in these RGB areas so you can play around and see the just all the different colors that you can get. So you could pick a different color and assign it. Once you have a color, you can go over in your image and start painting. Left mouse button down to draw. You can click the right mouse button to erase to black. Uh, didn't have a nice eraser icon, so I used the paintbrush icon for that one. Now let's say you know you've already got an image here, and you want to start with a brand new clean slate, so you can hit new image. Now the first time you store an image for the sequence, it's going to ask you to pick a directory. So I'm going to go up to where that sequence file is stored and I'm going to create a new directory. I'll just call it image test. So once I do that, it'll lock that in as as a directory to store your image files in. It won't won't keep asking you. So now your model's not going to update to you actually save the file. And that's just because the effects operate on the file that's on disk. So I actually have to save it to disk for it to update you could draw a few things, you know, whatever kind of picture you want to draw. And then hit save image. Since this hasn't been named yet, I'll just call it image one. Hit save and now you'll see the model update over here. Um, let's see, so I could blank it out again, create something completely different, save that, you can save it right over that. I need to check that, I don't know why it's asking me about that over right. That file was in there, but I deleted it. Um, you can also hit load image and go load the previous one back in. On the load, you should be able to also change the file type. Oh, and go back to. Uh, why can I go up here? Maybe that's a setting in the dialog I need to fix.
So whatever picture you select automatically assigns to it and then you can make make some edits to the picture. And if you don't want to overwrite that one you could do save as and it's going to go back to the directory from wherever you just loaded. Which I'm not sure. I might have to decide if I want to change that because I kind of wanted it to lock into the same image directory. Let's see if this does that same overwrite. Yeah, that didn't ask me about the overwrite. I don't know what happened on those first two. I did just delete those files. Um, the eraser is just kind of a permanent erase it back to black. With, be able to do it with the left mouse button instead of when you're here, you can do it with the right mouse button. Um, if I select the color swatch and select the eyedropper, then when I click in here, I can actually change what color is assigned to that color swatch. Again, I didn't have a uh, I didn't have a nice icon to use for that, so I had to use one of the built-in icons. Um, it'll show the file name down here. So a few other things of note. When you click on an effect like this image here does not you can't draw on it. See how it won't, you know, even if I have it selected, you can't draw on it. So I want to add something later to show you why, because what's happening here is I don't let you draw on an image that's not to the proper scale. So this image is wider than your model, and I don't have it where you can edit an image unless it fits the size of your model right now. So I'm probably going to give you the capability later to be able to hit a button that rescales it to the size of your model if you want to do that. But for now I'll just show it to you, but it, it, you can't edit it. Um, one other thing of note is if you if you select a ping image that you created in Photoshop you have the chance that you're going to see this warning about the color profile. That's coming from a, a library down deep in WX widgets that we don't have control over and I need to figure out how to suppress that. I thought I saw a code in our code base that said it was going to suppress this but it doesn't look like it's working. But just ignore it. It doesn't really matter. And can't think of anything else right now. This is still really in its infancy. There's a few kinks to work out but it's looking uh, looking you know promising to be able to draw draw animations now and I'll be expanding on the features as we go. Let's see. Try just one more. Say, why does that keep on this? I gotta check that out. Now you see it update to the new one you just created. So then you could drag a, another picture effect down. It's going to default to the last image you were on. Clear that out. Something didn't look right there too. Let me do that again. So that one looks fine. Yeah, it looks like it's taking an image for the other model, so it doesn't... In fact, yeah, you see you can't edit it because it doesn't fit this model. So you just start with a new image and draw, draw something brand new. So anyway, I hope that gets you started on being able to use this effect as soon as we, I mean, use this capability as soon as we can get the release out. we got a few other nice goodies in there that, that Dan's done. You can now, well, I should be able to show it to you. Let's see. Let me close this. I might need to open a different sequence. Let me, let me open up this sequence. And let me go to, let's 
say this view. So if you look at this view, it's a candy cane group. Now you notice how I have a candy canes view. If you look at my master view, I have all my candy canes and I have that candy cane group. Actually this should be in here. Make a large oh there it is at the bottom. I thought those were alphabetical, that's why it was surprising me. So anyway, when you're on this view, you can now double click and there's your submodels so then you can drop effects down onto any of those models or drop an effect on the entire model group. Not sure why that's not rendering. Oh, it must be, uh, yeah, I think I know what's going on because the group, the group's a little different based on uh, the size. Plus, I accidentally hit the render button, so it's it's going to take forever. So I'm going to go ahead and stop. This wasn't really what I was trying to show you, but it is an upcoming feature that, that Dan got going that you could come in here and double click and see your subgroups under your model group. So I'm going to end this now, and I'll talk to you later.